So this video will show you how to import data beyond your standard contacts and accounts. If you've not had a chance, please refer to the initial video we've recorded about how to import contacts and account into Ascendix. This video will cover a different type of object, which is a common request for those who want to import other data, specifically real estate data, such as properties or listings. <clears throat> Again, before importing, it's sort of important to understand what elements are required when you're manually entering a property record, as that will help you decide how to format your spreadsheet for importing mass properties or multiple properties. So we're going to go ahead and create a new property, and the first question you'll get is, what is the type of property you're importing? Because this is the initial prompt, you'll want to make sure that your spreadsheet has a column that says property type or property record type and indicate if it's office or land or multifamily. You can have multiple types on one spreadsheet. It's just important that you dictate or delineate what it is, and if they're all the same, that's fine. You could just copy and drag that value down on your spreadsheet. So presumably we could say it's office. The only required field in this column you have to have on your spreadsheet is the property name. Now for most buildings that is synonymous with the street address such as for example 123 Main Street but if for whatever reason it's part of an office park or it's got a more unique name such as a tower or something to that extent you could uh, put that name there as well. So this is pretty subjective just know that your spreadsheet has to have a column header that says property name. Everything else on here is pretty optional. Obviously there's an opportunity for you to have a column for street, city, state, and zip. Again those would all be separated into separate columns on your spreadsheet. One thing I do want to point out that's pretty common that people want to import is who the owner is as a company or an account or who the owner is as a contact. Notice in the system here it's going to want to search for accounts to link that account to this property by virtue of the relationship of owner. And so I can, you know, in the system directly here, link individuals um, as I see fit. On your spreadsheet, those uh, values will be names. However, keep in mind that um, those names need to be imported prior as accounts or as contacts. So um, if your goal is to import properties and establish the relationship of who the owner is and have it be populated, know that those need to be imported as accounts and contacts first. So if you're unsure on how to do that, just watch the other video and it'll walk you through how to import accounts and contacts. The same thing would really apply for any other relationship you want to link, such as a listing broker or a contact. They're all really accounts or contacts that are linked to the property with the uh, header of or the column header in your spreadsheet of the field name. Like I said, everything else is um, pretty standard. If you're really into getting a building stacked and you need a stacking plan, then you need on a property, you do need to indicate how many floors above ground it is and what the average floor size is. And as you move to, um, further down, there are just really quite a lot of fields, most of which people don't use. So I'll say the top of the fold is the most significant. Once you have this squared away and you feel like your spreadsheet is in pretty good condition, you can click on the import button. And select properties indicate what you're trying to do. For the most part, you're trying to add new records. And this part can be tricky, so you'll want, you'll want to pay attention, especially if you've linked owners that are accounts and owners that are contacts. This is the area where you're basically going to tell it, for my column that has owner, landlord, contact, I want you to match that by contact name. And for my owner that's got um, an account value, I want you to match that by account name. Sometimes people have both, sometimes the owner is just a contact, but you'll definitely need to do this area for the mapping to make sure that it works properly. The last part is, um, so keeping in mind that you can actually can only import one record type at a time. So if your spreadsheet does have a mix of office and industrial, et cetera, you will need to parse those out in a copy paste and just save them on separate CSV spreadsheets. So you might want to sort your spreadsheet by the, off the property type, group them on individual um, tabs on your spreadsheet, and then save them individually as CSVs because when you do upload them, it has to be per record type. So you can leave it to what it is that you're importing, select the CSV file, and then go about your way. The last screen you'll get will essentially be um, a side by side to make sure all your fields are mapped. Then you follow the prompts for next, next, and you should be on your way. 
if you do have any rejections, you'll get a spreadsheet that's emailed to you from Salesforce telling you what records or what rows have rejected and why, and it'll allow you to discern if it's an error with some of the data that you've entered or really what is the issue that's causing the import to fail. This concept, um, you know, we've just imported or pretended to import properties really applies for anything else. So if you wanted to import leases as an example, uh, let's take this a step further. Um, again, it helps you to go to try to manually create a lease as it provides you some context. Required fields here are a little bit more. You have to have a unit name or number. So this could be something like suite 1200 or it could be the tenant's name. Of course, I'm just writing tenant's name plus the property name. Um, so that's really a subjective decision, what you call the unit name or number, but it is a required field. So whatever it is, just keep in mind that you need to have it in there. And then obviously the property needs to pre-exist before the lease could. So we've assumed that we've imported properties and this would be on your spreadsheet where you would link the property that lease is in by the name of the property. If you recall, we were importing properties and saying that the name was important. So your lease spreadsheet would have a column for unit name and number would have a column for property and would have assumed that you've already added or imported the properties prior. The square footage on your spreadsheet would be a straight number, no commas. Um, the tenant, similarly to how the owner landlord worked on the property, the tenant is an account that would need to have been imported or added prior. The tenant contact is a contact that will have been imported or added prior. Tenant rep broker, so forth. Um, a note about floors, again, back to the whole stacking plan concept, if you want this tenant to be on the stacking plan of the property, it's not sufficient on your spreadsheet to just have the number two. The naming convention for the floor is the property name plus um, the floor, such that for this tenant here, um, if they're on the second floor of this building, I'll just put suite 210 here, um, for floors, it's actually, um, you'll see what I'm doing here. So I'm typing in floor two, but it's actually connecting to a floor record. And that floor record is called Preston Park Financial Center floor two. So the naming convention is the property name plus the word floor plus the number of that floor. So the number two on your spreadsheet will not be sufficient. It will fail. Rather, you need to have a formula that basically takes the property name plus the word floor plus the number. If you're not using stack and plan, you could just essentially disregard this. Um, everything else is pretty standard. These are dates, dates by month, date, and year. So you just can't have um, March 2019, but you do need to have a date. If the date is unknown, just put the first or the 30th if that helps you. And um, again, the more acquainted you get with the form, the easier your spreadsheet will be to set up because every field has to basically correspond to the column headers of your spreadsheet. Once you feel like you're at a comfortable place with your leases as far as how that spreadsheet looks, um, you can go ahead and import leases. And again, your leases could all be in different properties. That doesn't matter because for each lease record corresponds to a line or a row on your spreadsheet. So you might have line one for this tenant in this property and line two in your spreadsheet might be a completely different property with a completely different tenant. So just know that that's absolutely possible. Feel free to reach out to us for any additional questions regarding importing commercial real estate data.